He's the subject of a current art exhibit, popular podcast, and many books. His name is Banksy, an artist who works in the shadows but can't seem to avoid the limelight. Seth Doan goes in search of an elusive modern master. Most artists have an obsession that defines their work. Monet had light, Hockney has color. I've got police response time. That's Banksy in his own words from his first authorized exhibition in 14 years. Once seen as a vandal, he's now revered for his work. It sells for millions. But the famously anonymous street artist's most ambitious masterpiece may be keeping his identity hidden. Did you hear directly from Banksy? No, th th this is one of, I, I suppose, the great mysteries. Uh, I've never met him. I've never spoken to him. But you're uh, hosting the exhibition. But we are hosting the exhibition. Putting it together required extensive planning and a cover story. Gareth James, Why? who manages the Gallery of Modern Art in Glasgow, uh, Scotland, was telling people they'd be refurbishing the windows. Cone. Had to keep it secret from colleagues, family and friends. You couldn't tell your family? No, no, no. We, we just didn't want to risk it, uh, getting out. Uh, did, did you have to sign a non-disclosure yeah, agreement? Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. The idea, James says, was for this show to just appear unannounced, like Banksy's work. Cut and Run, 25 years card labor, features the stencils for many of his best-known images and work from as far back as the late 90s. Banksy recreates his desk and his childhood bedroom, where he explains how this scene from the cult movie Jaws inspired him. Sick vandalism. That is a deliberate mutilation of a public service message. It showed me everything I needed to know about graffiti, he writes. It should be audacious and funny. It seems that so much of this exhibition is the captions. Yeah, you really maybe come away with a, a feeling of having an insight or maybe even trying to get to know Banksy a, a, a bit because that voice is there. Banksy's political voice has always been there in his art. In Ukraine last year, ruins were the canvas for his commentary on a conflict he paints as David versus Goliath. Banksy often champions the underdog, be it migrants or Palestinians in the West Bank, where in the shadow of Israel's separation barrier, he created the walled-off hotel. It was uh, Banksy's idea. Painted these two angels trying to take the wall apart. This is Banksy here. Yeah, this is Banksy. This is original Banksy. His art is coveted, but of course, graffiti is not exactly legal. Videos posted to his Instagram reveal his guerrilla-style tactics to avoid detection. The anonymity was there from the minute I met him. It was more about avoiding problems it, with the it police. Was, it was all about avoiding problems with the police and nothing to do with it being a promotional tool. Quite quickly, it became the best promotional tool that anyone could ever invent. Steve Lazaridis was an early associate of Banksy's in the working-class English town of Bristol. What kind of guy is he? Um, difficult. In what way? Yeah, just in that way that sometimes people that are a genius at what they're doing. Yeah, you know, there's no taking away from the fact that the guy's uh, like a, is a legend. He was making images and messages that everyone could understand, and I think that's what was the game changer. Like suddenly someone was making art that you didn't feel stupid looking at. He's sometimes criticized for that too, that it's too simplistic. Yeah, but he, he's only criticized by, and I'm gonna swear, by <laughs> in the art world. They've never liked him, they've never liked the movement. It's been at the fore now for almost 30 years, and all of that without any help from the art world. What's interesting though, there is now this dance between oh, now, these two oh, worlds. But, but now the art world wants it. Lazaridis says he has thousands of photos of Banksy working, some he's published. Though they've parted ways, he has not publicly revealed the artist's identity. But listen to this story about Banksy searching for inspiration. It was on my computer, and I looked at him and I went, Robin, you're looking up like child sex dolls on my computer. He's like, yeah, yeah, I just want to get something that we can fill full of helium and put up in the air. Now, you know you're saying a name, yeah, when you say that, told me that story? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That name's out there. And who says it's true? 
But you're saying, you said Robin, Robert. Robin, Robert, Robbie. People have been speculating about Banksy's identity for decades. Among the names tossed around are Bristol artist Robin Gunningham and Robert Delnaya from the band Massive Attack, also from Bristol. Mr. Delnaya is, is a graffiti artist. Uh, yes, I, and I, I would say arguably way better than Banksy. Yeah, and there's just, a lot of talk just, that that's just, the same person. Yeah, I've heard the stories and it ain't me. These, these Banksy artworks pop up pretty much along the lines of a Massive Attack tour in this city and that city, Massive so, Attack so, is so, here so or there. maybe the artist had been at the gig and then done a piece of art. It's not, it's just like, yes, it's Robert Down Larger. And me, and a few other people. You have to dance this very fine line. You know this information <laughs> people want to know, and I don't know if you're being serious or well, not. Well, maybe I'm being serious and maybe I'm not. That's as, that's as much as you're getting from me. <laughs> it's a tough world to get into, Banksy's world. It's not tough, it's impossible. I deal in very important artworks by major museum artists from Picasso to Damien Hirst, and there is nowhere near this level of secrecy or gamesmanship almost. What do you mean by gamesmanship? It's a bit Wild West dealing in Banksy uh, artworks. Acherus and Deepup is one of the biggest collectors and dealers of Banksy's work out of his London gallery. Rather exclusively, Banksy has managed to create a new set of rules within the art world, which is if it doesn't have a certificate of authenticity, you should not sell it. You should not buy it. And that's astonishing. It also opens a quagmire of problems. What happens if the artist doesn't like an early work? Or what happens if the artist doesn't like the person seeking the authenticity? Yeah, problem, right? Whew. The art world is interesting. Wild West. <laughs> and it seems Banksy's people can play sheriff. The auction house Christie's stopped responding to emails regarding our interview request. Sotheby's pulled out of a scheduled interview at the last minute after telling us they were going to check with Banksy's team. It's a closed shop. I mean, I've been dealing in his work for almost 20 years now, and it's, it's a closed shop to me. It was Banksy's 2004 work, Napalm, which first piqued Andipa's interest. I was so taken by it. The perfect balance of frivolity with, with serious elements, you know, me a message. And then you discover, as you get to know his work more and more, that, you know, you, you, you have a little snigger first, a little laugh, because it's light-hearted, but then you kind of suck your teeth a little. Actually, there's, there's some weight to it. How much is it Banksy's message? How much is it his pure skill as an artist? He is actually quite painterly, but he's chosen to execute his work through stencils, much like Andy Warhol uh, did through screen prints. But there's no precedent in the art world for this. Can I sell it now? And sell it for 860000 Shredding a piece seconds after it was sold at auction for $1.4 million. An irreverent middle finger to the establishment is a theme of his work, but the stunt actually added value. The shredded painting resold a few years later for $25 million. In the Glasgow exhibition, Banksy shows how he pulled it off. For all that's on display here, there's one essential implement Banksy uses, which is not the non-disclosure agreement. I still struggle to say the artist's name. I spent years absolutely not saying the artist's name for fear that I would give something away. And like those who do know the coin. artist's identity are bound or choose not to expose him. Am I going to reveal it? Probably not. There are institutions, including UK papers, that would pay a lot of money for him to be unmasked. Not one person has stepped up to take the, the bounty. How can that be? At the risk of overly romanticizing, one has to assume that he's a good person. He knows how to look after the people around him. Would something change if we knew his identity? Uh, I, I'm not sure, and I really hope we never find out.